Hello, my name is Jeff. Today I'm going to be teaching section 1.6 of ground lesson 1 from the private pilot rotorcraft helicopter training course. This section is aviation fuels and fuel systems. Students can gain a better understanding of the helicopter as a whole and specifically the ignition and induction systems by better understanding the fuel system. So let's get started. One of the things that we're going to talk about today are fuel grades. And like cars, aviation fuel is graded. I have a listing up here of the various grades. Avgas, or aviation gas, 80. Avgas 100. Avgas 100 LL. And Jet A are some of the grades of aviation fuel. One of the ways that regulation ensures that we don't put the wrong type of gas in our aircraft is they make the gas different colors. So for instance, red avgas indicates that avgas 80, green for the 100, blue for the 100 low lead, and either colorless or straw colored for the jet fuels. If you want to find out more information about this portion, you can look in the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge on page 6-27 where you can also find this chart that can help you remember the colors of the various types of av gas. Aircraft, in order to hold this gas, have fuel tanks, just like a car. Uh, I've got a couple diagrams up here of the various fuel tanks. Aircraft have main tanks and when installed auxiliary tanks or additional extra tanks. Uh, if an aircraft has more than one tank, but they're both main, that is, they're not an optional piece of equipment, then they might just be called a left and right tank, for instance. Some of the things that most tanks have, we have a main and aux tank drawn here. They have an overflow or vent valve. The vent is so that when the aircraft ascends and pressure decreases, the expansion doesn't cause a rupture in the fuel tank or in the fuel lines. Additionally, as fuel is drawn from the tank, if you didn't have a vent installed in the tank, uh, the tank could collapse in on itself. That is, the vacuum would, would cause uh, the tank to suck in. So if you can imagine pouring a uh, milk jug upside down without allowing air in by tilting it slightly, let air in, the milk jug kind of collapses. And that, that's the same concept. So we have a vent valve that, that keeps that from happening. Usually co-located with that uh, is an overflow valve as well. It's kind of like an overflow valve in your sink or bathtub so that if the tank is overflowed or things expand, um, again, we don't end up with damage. It just overflows out that overflow valve. We often have a shutoff valve as a part of our tank system. We have a strainer or filter. We may or may not have a primer that allows us to prime the uh, air and fuel mixture device such as a carburetor or fuel injector. And somewhere near the bottom of the tank or the, or the filter or perhaps in both of those places, we have a drain. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that drain later on in this lesson. It has to do with uh, draining off things that are contaminants to the fuel. So one thing about tanks that we need to know is they're usually installed near the center of gravity of the aircraft. The reason that is, is the fuel weighs about six pounds per gallon. Well, in an aircraft such as the R-22 that only weighs 1,370 pounds max for the Beta 2, this represents more than 10% of the weight. And if we don't put that weight near the center of gravity of the aircraft as fuel burns off, as it always does, uh, the center of gravity of the aircraft could be adjusted such that the aircraft was no longer safe, safe to fly. We will discuss center of gravity in future lessons. I believe it's ground lesson nine where we'll start talking about um, center of gravity. So that's why we have the uh, tanks in the, in the center of the aircraft, near the center of gravity of the aircraft. So we're going to talk a little bit more about how these tanks work. And we'll start with um, fuel lines. So in order to get from the main tank to the engine through whatever the carburetor or the uh, fuel injectors, there needs to be fuel lines. Well, inside those lines is a certain amount of unusable fuel. So this is fuel that we can't count upon when we do our fuel calculations to say how far we can go. So your car, 
for instance, might hold 13 gallons of gas, but at all times in your fuel filter, such as in our uh, strainer and in the lines, there's going to be a certain amount of fuel that just can never make it to the engine. So in the, again in the R22, for instance, in the POH, you could find this information in chapter 2 down here, and it talks about the fuel capacity. It says usable and unusable fuel. So in this case, a main tank in an R22 can have 19.2 gallons of usable fuel, and then the aux tank, 10.5. So that's something that you need to know as a pilot. You need to know where to find it, and you need to know how to use that information. Our fuel tanks, we have two main types of fuel tanks as far as getting that fuel from the tank, through the lines that we just discussed, to the, to the engine. And the one, one way is the gravity-fed type tank, and the other way is a pressurized tank. So I'm going to talk a little bit about both. One, for gravity tanks, the tanks are often up high, well above the engine, so that gravity can draw the fuel down. It would draw it through that shutoff valve to a strainer or filter, and then down to the carburetor uh, in order to be used in the engine. Benefit of gravity, very simple, not a whole lot of moving parts, no electrical parts really necessary there. If we move over to the pump-driven type tanks, uh, oftentimes there is a pump because the fuel tanks or some portion of the fuel might be below the engine or for some reason uh, more um, pressure was needed to get the fuel from the tank to the engine. In this case I've drawn a left and a right tank. You would have the same shutoff valve, would go through lines through a strainer or filter to the pump and then to the engine. The pump may be a part of the engine, or it may be off of the engine driving the fuel through the lines. Oftentimes, this pump provides negative pressure, so it's sucking the fuel out of the tanks. In addition, for starting, kind of get that, that flow going, just like a siphon, once you get it going, it'll keep going. But often, to get it going, we'll have an electric pump called a boost pump that will help during starting or during really high altitude operations. And that pump is often submersed in the tanks or it can be off the lines. So that provides positive pressure to that engine driven pump. Still we have the overflow and vent and in this case I drew a, uh, another diagram of the sh shutoff valve. In this case instead of having a main and an aux tank that both fuel lines would go together to one line uh, and just the fuel tanks would drain evenly. In, uh, in some aircraft, the left and right can be selected. Left tank or right tank or both can be selected uh, as, as needed for maybe CG requirements or contaminated fuel or a, or a, a problem engine or for, for, for whatever reason. For more information about these two diagrams, you can look in your pilot's handbook of aeronautical knowledge, 625, or you can look in the helicopter flying manual handbook on 4-11. Uh,